tried very hard, they try hard every year, but they haven't been able to break, hold and strangle hold. This is one that they will remember forever. Look at the Holden Racing team from when it was established through the Craig Lowndes, Mark Scaifair, Peter Brock was there. The drivers that have driven for it, the success that they'd had. The Walkinshaw Andretti United team's lineage is the Holden Racing team. And people are emotionally connected to us. And listen to the roar on the top of the mountain. The Holden fans love it. We were arguably one of Australia's biggest sporting brands and certainly one of the most famous racing teams in history. That was Holden Racing team at its very, very best. It was an extraordinary time. Fantastic. If you fast forward 10 years on, for a team of that level of historic success, they're nowhere. The Holden Racing Team, as we know it, will be no more in 2017. That's a 260 kilometre an hour approach to that corner. I think it's been a very difficult assignment for Ryan. It was quite miserable a couple of years. Yeah, I think most people in the team would say that. It was, really was the end of an era. And so I wanted to reinvent the team. It had to come from something which was genuine, that could evoke passion, that would be exciting, that would be something we could build a story around. You know, I thought it was a great opportunity for us. I think we just hit it off right away. I had known Ryan for some time, and he was looking for a partner. I kind of thought, well, wait a minute, I might want to get in. On that, uh, on that action. New colours, new names, new cars, new drivers, three new rookies in the field, and what a lineup. Mostert on screen, cut up 25, part of the Wonkinshaw Andretti United outfit, so two new drivers and new colours for this brand new season for this outfit. Because you've got a group of people in this team who have been through years of underperformance, oh, years of mediocrity, who are just fucking over it. Forget about how tired you are at the moment. Just fucking focus on today. We need to get a fucking result today. The World Health Organization has declared coronavirus a global pandemic. The Australian Formula One Grand Prix has been cancelled. We need to cross the border into New South Wales before midnight tonight. Motorsport fans for 15 weeks have been starved from supercars action and we're back and we're into it. The amount of time that they've been away, this will be interesting. The car is a dog here. You know, he wants everything now. Chauvin, he's given him one Fuck. down at turn one. Bullshit. Probably one of the worst cars in the country. Okay, so stop yelling and screaming. Yeah. Calm down. I'm just trying to ask. Challenges either make people fall apart or it brings people closer together, and in our case, it's brought us closer together. 105 days, 11,864 Ks we've done. I really want to try and win a championship. The team really wants to win a championship. This has been a great strategy play. If Mossa can get by, he does. Yes! gets a podium as a rookie. Everyone's on board to take this team to the next level. We have intentions to take this team back to the top and uh, probably shut up a few of the haters as well. Having the strength of Michael Andretti and Zach Brown buying into this race team and wanting the future of this race team to go forward sends a big message to the paddock and drivers take notice of that. I think Ryan's got a lot of, uh, lot of energy, uh, really wants to win, clearly racing's in his uh, bloodline and uh, I think what he's built here is, uh, is an outstanding team. You know, I think this is just the, the beginning of something huge. For more than a quarter of a century, supercar racing has been deeply ingrained in Australian sporting culture. Fast, spectacular, raucous. These unique, thundering V8 powered beasts lend a special brand of power, speed, and wild entertainment. At home and all around the world, passionate fans simply love the show. Like all great sporting spectacles, there's a rivalry that defines the sport. In fact, it borders on tribal war. Oh, it's not it's not been turned! To this day in the red corner, there's an army of loyal GM supporters, and for much of the last 30 years, one team, the Walkinshaw family-owned Holden Racing Team, earned the enduring affection 
of the Team Red Faithful. Championships, Bathurst victories, race wins, and pole positions. HRT claimed every imaginable accolade in Australian motorsport. Built from the ashes of the once famous Holden dealer team, the Walkinshaw supercar story is an extended feature-length lifetime saga. A story that begins with a painfully slow start, a struggle to eventually find success, that morphed into an iron grip on success for more than a decade. To his champ, Alan Grice. And then an agonizing fall from grace when the original outfit lost its GM factory pack status. General Motors will be retiring the Holden brand at the end of this year. Now, 30 years after those black and white VO model Holden Commodores first arrived on the scene, with a new name and a new vigor, Walkinshaw Andretti United is on the march back to the top. Michael Andretti and Zach Brown add two powerhouse international partners and names to the quest in search of a fresh start, with two new gladiators behind the wheel to lead the charge. Anytime you go to market, when you're looking for a driver, particularly on the back of the results that the team had had for two years prior, where weren't spectacular, you need something, a carrot. You need a carrot. How am I going to sign Chaz Mostert? How am I going to get his attention? How am I going to show him that this is where the team's going? And without knowing what they showed Chaz, having the strength of Michael Andretti and Zach Brown buying into this race team and, you know, wanting the future of this race team to go forward, sends a big message to the paddock and drivers take notice of that. Who are Walkinshaw and Dreddy United? Yeah. Well, I'm Ryan Walkinshaw and, you know, the, the, it used to be Walkinshaw Racing before it was Walkinshaw and Dreddy United. Um, Michael Andretti is the Andretti part of it and Zach Brown is the United part of it. So uh, Michael Andretti uh, is from the Andretti family, racing family in, uh, in, in the US. Um, his father was an incredibly successful racing driver um, and Michael's uh, been a successful race team owner with Andretti Autosports. Zach Brown is a successful businessman who um, is now uh, CEO of McLaren F1 team. He's also got his own uh, personal race team, United Autosports in the UK, um, and uh, he's the United part of it. One of my career highlights is probably driving for this team. Walkinshaw Racing was the uh, Holden Racing team, Golden Era and all that kind of stuff, and they achieved race wins after race wins and, and championships. Oh, AJ, how you going, mate? Hey. What's going on? You well? It's a brand new team, you know, once obviously Michael and Zach got involved and, and now we're walking sure Andretti United, it's, it's a fresh start, it's a different philosophy. There's different players in it to be driving for three absolute powerheads in, in motorsport. It's fantastic. G'day, lads. But we're here trying to make our own history now. How you going? Oh, what's going on, <laughs> Chaz is a super, super pro driver, but also just his attitude around the team and being who he is, um, being a little bit of a larrikin. Uh, everybody loves him on the team and, uh, you know, a real team player. So, uh, you know, he's, he's a dream driver that you would love to have on your team. And still there's the focus on winning and, and taking our team to the top. The best part for me was meeting the crew and the guys. And when you start talking about people working together, that gets me excited because it's just not one person in the sport to make it happen. And what I really liked about Walkinshaw and United was all these people were willing to build. It wasn't about overnight success and thinking that it's going to happen. It's about we really want to put a team around you to, to make you um, comfortable and get the results that we all want to achieve. Australian Formula 4 champion in 2010 with a record 14 out of 24 race wins. He came into this category late this year with eyes wide open and he has been loving every minute of it. But none more so than today because yet again the rookies come to the fore and Chas Mostert oh, breaks through. <laughs> Chas Mostert's one of the absolute superstars in supercars, has been for a long period of time. Uh, but was stuck at one team. He was stuck at Pro Drive Racing and he felt like he didn't feel like there was a lot of room for improvement, a lot of room for growth. Whereas this opportunity to join the Walkinshaw organisation, to become the standout leader within the team, I think was a good opportunity for Chaz to further his skill set. And today you have seen the future of V8 supercars. Scott McLaughlin winning earlier, Chaz Mostert winning this one. 
and his head is spinning in more ways than one. The goal of every supercar driver is to capture championship wins. But ask any died in the world Aussie race fan what really matters. And there's just one name, one place, one track, and one race that stops the nation. It's only the second start for Monster. Three second margin, he blocks down the inside because he can. He comes a whack, and another whack. And Monster goes through on the inside. This is huge in Australian motorsport. They've gone berserk at Ford Performance Racing. This kid is going to win this thing today. He's fast on track and he's fantastically commercial off track. Um, and you can, there's a lot of drivers out there who, you know, fucking brilliant racing drivers, but you know, borderline completely useless um, off track. And there's other drivers who are fantastic commercial assets, but don't really deliver on track. Getting the mix between the two is really important. Chess Austin. The Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. Chas Mostert, it's only his second start at this place. It's extraordinary. His second start at Mount Panorama, and you win the biggest race of the year. Even though drivers, they seem to be leaders, and they are, they, they become de facto leaders in a race team, even though they probably shouldn't. Um, you know, they're just an employee like anyone else. But when you've got a driver that genuinely doesn't see himself like that, sees himself as part of the team and just as important as a mechanic, um, that's what Chaz is, and that's what we want to kind of build, is that we're all in this together. There's no top and bottom, we're just a proper team. Um, and, he, and Chaz epitomizes that kind of mentality, so he was a big focus for us. This is awesome! Woo! Oh. Hey, I'll tell you what, Bathurst 1000, there's only one lap you need to lead, and it's the last lap. Unbelievable. Yeah, started at a, a very young age, at, at six. I remember going home um, from school and all my friends at school were getting all little Pee Wee 50s and thought, oh, it's, it's, it's a fantastic idea. Go ask mum that and can I get a Pee Wee 50? And she absolutely freaked out, starting to think I'm going to break bones in the backyard and all that kind of stuff. And in the heat of a moment, she said uh, four wheels or, or no wheels. And then dad got a light bulb moment that he heard about maybe getting someone into, getting me into go-karting. and. Um, he knew someone that was ready in the sport, so that I think two weekends after that, we went and checked it out, and um, yeah, that's that's where it all kind of started. My old man Eddie is very unique um, relationship we have together. I mean, from the earliest days of um, six and seven, you know, going go kart racing together, and to the, I think for the last couple of years, there was actually a race he had never missed. It didn't even matter if I went overseas. You know, from go-karting all the way to supercars, he's been a big part of my um, family support and, and pretty much my rock through it all. Oh, big, big crowd, a massive moment for one of the Pepsi Max cars. Into Car the wall, out of business for Chaz Mostert, the reigning champion, has had a monumental crash. The day for me that he's not around as much or can't get him on the phone or can't talk about racing with him will probably change my racing because it's all I've really known. Do not get out of your car. Austin is speaking. This is bad. It's all right, buddy. It's all right. We're on their way now. So, uh... I'm always one of them believers that you always try to find down the track. You try to draw everything as a positive, even though it's such a negative in your life, or you try to spin it off a different way. There's negatives that will hold you with your whole life, but it's how you try and like, pick yourself up as a person. I like to get some training in, definitely since you know early days of my career where I really didn't do too much and then had the crash in 2015 and that was really a big eye opener for me. Bike riding and, and gym stuff is something quite high. A little bit of sauna work as well because obviously we in the car, you know, it's about 20 degrees above ambient temperature in the car during the most races. The belief this year is a, a lot different. I mean, we, we can be winners and, and that's what we, we want to do. So. I guess comes with that, it's a little bit of more disappointment when you kind of don't achieve that. You know, we know we're close enough or thereabouts, um, how do we dust ourselves off and, and go back after it? I just would really like to get in there and, and lead them back towards the front. I mean, it's not going to be an easy task, but it's, it's something that I, I grab with both hands and the opportunity that they're trying to give me and they want the result just as bad as you. So short term goal is just to, to turn it around in the right direction. Uh, long term goal is, is obviously keep 
keep climbing and, and try and achieve success together. It's so awesome to, to get to test the WAU car today before we get to the first official test day. So you got DOS working? Testing is heavily restricted in supercar competition, with just three days allowed each year per car, per team. It's exciting. Given the shortage to track time, for this new look crew, the first session of 2020 is crucial. The star driver signing of Chaz Mostert isn't the only new face of the team. So the start of 2020 was a clean slate. We have two new drivers, so it kind of enables you to build your culture and talk about your team, understand what your team are about. Also allows you to, to lead where we're going in the future. Chaz is joined by his longtime engineer, Adam DeBore, and rookie Bryce Fullwood will drive the team's second car fresh from Supercar's Development Series Championship win. The clear focus for the group, to win. Yeah, been lucky enough to bring Adam across from previous years and previous teams. So um, for me, that was really important to get him. And I think it's going to really help me get the, the leg up in, in this year coming into a new environment. We've had so many years in the past that we've worked together in a different philosophy, a different mindset. And, and I know the team's got a different mindset and philosophy as well. So if we can bring that together, bring the best of both worlds, and, and hopefully we can move forward and, and make a competitive race car and get the results that we all want to do. He'll fit in great. He always gets along with most people, so uh, even though he's a, a big King, King Ginger. Yeah. You know, number one thing with Chaz is we've got to enjoy what we're doing, otherwise why bother doing what we're doing? So, you know, if we're enjoying it, having fun, then everything just works so much better. As he has more fun, he wants better results. So then he knows that that's the time to switch off and focus on, you know, working with me, working with the boys, getting the best out of our platform, getting the best out of the car, and, and understanding, you know, there is a time to be the, the Chaz on TV where he's a bit, a bit silly and, and messes around a bit, but, you know, we also, you know, we get the serious, you know, focused, dedicated race driver when we need him as well. How does it feel? Steering load's pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, come out over like nine into ten. It's crazy to single one person out because you know you don't just go racing with a couple of people. It's a team effort, and you know I could see all the guys and girls there at WAU. They're passionate about racing and they're passionate about trying to get results. The team, as a team and as a unit, as a cohesive unit of people working together, um, is better than it's ever been. Uh, Column's an easy one, we can do that one. Yep. Yes, you don't yep. mind about the angle changing. Should be okay. That's okay. Yep. yep. When you look at the drivers going into next season with Chaz and Bryce, um, two of the best drivers that we've had since I've been involved. Um, but on, on track and off track, I think, I think Chaz is probably the best guy that I've worked with. We'll just get a couple more runs in. Yeah, no, like we'll, I'm happy running yeah. today. I'm just, it's great that we've got the shakedown because yeah, I think pick, pick the stuff you got to change straight for yep. the tail we said we we're going to build a team around him and his personality and his character and the way and his professionalism is is you know second to none in supercars he's one of the most attractive drivers for a team owner in the category one of the big things is that you know we wanted to have a very strong no dickhead policy in this team actually even straight when you're trying to straight drive the car you feel like you can't really load the tire for a race you know, we've got a really, really strong partnership group and strong fan base as a, you know, underlying foundation to build from. So I think we've got a lot of the right ingredients. And to be honest, we're running out of excuses. I'd like to go and get another Bathurst win. So my personal little ambition is to, is to get another Bathurst win to have that trophy back in our, uh, in our trophy cabinet. Shakedown complete. Everything ran pretty smoothly. Can't wait to hit the ground running. Looking forward to 2020.
Walkinshaw and, and Holden have been interlinked for a long period of time in Australia and it's kind of bizarre because um, TWR and, and Walkinshaw internationally has always been a, a brand that works with multiple different manufacturers, races in multiple different categories for different brands as well. But in Australia, um, you know, the Walkinshaw brand got very heavily entrenched on the Holden side. The Bathurst 1000 is iconic. One of the world's greatest races and ranked alongside Le Mans 24 Hours and the Indy 500 when it comes to motorsport prestige. The Walkinshaw operation picked up where the Holden dealer team and Peter Brock left off when HRT won the great race for the Holden brand again in 1990 and winning one race in every three for the next 30 years. Checkered flag, how does it feel? Two East champ, Alan Grice. It's uh, the best feeling I've had since 1986, I gotta tell you. <laughs> well done, son, you've driven superbly. So much of the heritage, hype, passion for Holden Motorsport and Bathurst centered on the Walkinshaw era and their race winning prowess. The champions! Although they were no longer the factory-backed team when GM dropped the bombshell that the Holden brand would be retired at the end of 2020, the mood inside the Walkinshaw Andretti United team was grim. What next for the team that proudly and successfully raced Holdens for over three decades? All right, guys, I just want to get everyone together because a lot of you have been kind of asking me what the Holden announcement on Monday sort of means for our team. And um, some of you also have been asking what it means for our wider business. So. I I can't go into a huge amount of detail. My name is Ryan Walkinshaw and my uh, involvement in Walkinshaw and Dreddy United is I'm the Walkinshaw part of it. Well, the story is my, my dad passed away, so um, that's how it came about. And a month later, I was in Australia, getting into the business and understanding what was going on. I had an option, I could either sit back and, and continue what I was doing, or I could take over the family business, which is what my dad always sort of wanted. When I joined the Holden Racing Team, Tom Walkinshaw was running it. I, I signed directly with Tom and I was very fortunate to spend quite a bit of time with him and learn a lot from him. He was uncompromising, tough as nails, old school, bang your fists on the table type of guy to get things done. So he left a huge legacy when he passed and the running of the team passed on to Ryan. Before I took over the business, I was at university up in, uh, in the north of England and uh, had my own business uh, running uh, club events and uh, I was a DJ and music producer as well. So a slight change going from that into this. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was awesome. I got laid a lot more back then. It was a lot cooler. There was a lot of blonde, long hair. Yeah, long blonde hair, eyebrow piercing, tongue piercing. We are HSV Manufacturing. Um, this is our plant over at Clayton. The easy thing would have been for us just to sell the business, get some cash in and, and all just retire. But, um, you know, that would have been an insult to what my dad worked so hard to build. You know, I was ambitious and believed that I could add to what he started. Always knew I was going to be involved in some period of time. It was always planned that my dad wanted to have some uh, involved in the business. And, um, you know, so I knew I was going to be here, but it's probably a little bit sooner than, uh, than I thought. There's a real difference in terms of how Ryan goes about it versus Tom, but there's also some things that you can you can tell that the apple hasn't fallen far from the tree. I mean racing's in my blood so I've always, you know, I, was, I grew up around a race, a racetrack. That's why I love supercars. If you're successful in supercars, you know, you know you've beaten some of the best people in the world. Let's not try and pretend that Holden pulling out of Australia and closing down the brand isn't a pretty tough thing to take. A lot of you guys in this room have worked with Holden and you know, been part of that brand and and uh, and that family for a long period of time. I mean, some people like Starry, you've had the Holden you know line on your shirt for 30 years. Um, my family have been working with Holden for 33 years. Walkinshaw's success in pit lane comes from when it was Holden Racing Team. It was a factory backed. It was the mega team. You know, it was Ford against Holden. Holden Racing Team was particularly at Bathurst, was the team. Success, you know, success with Brock, success with Scaife, success with Lowndes. Um, they were the team as a kid growing up, that's who you wanted to drive for. So I started with the team in 2008, with the Holden Racing Team and Walkinshaw Racing, 
Uh, the drivers at the time were Mark Scaife and Garth Tander. Uh, it was a hugely exciting time. Massive team, big brand, the big red team. Um, and you know, there was nothing other than the expectation of winning. The Holden Racing team for me growing up was one of those teams that you want to be part of, hopefully at some part of your career. Even the period where I was at the team, you really felt that the weight of the success previously because you wanted success at the race team. It's a well-followed team because there's a lot of people that have emotional connection to the past when it was the Holden Racing Team, the, f the official factory Holden team, and the people that are driven for it during that period, and people are emotionally connected to it. It's, it's just the way that our sport is. People are, you know, for whatever reason, they connect to a team, they connect to an entity, and that entity was the Holden Racing Team. Well, the pictures tell the story. The damage is massive. Sort of late 2000s onwards, it started to struggle, and, uh, and it's probably been struggling pretty hardcore for a while. Wow, what a heartbreak for these guys. That period of time between 2017, 2018, the team bottomed out, it's simple as that. The, you know, they were qualifying on the back row of the grid in what is a very competitive championship. And people expect more from that team than that, than qualifying on the back row of the grid, not featuring in the top 10 in many races. There was an expectation that that team, because of its history, needs to be up the front. It needs to be winning races. And in that period of time, it wasn't happening. Supercars is a uniquely Australian product, revered worldwide. When Ryan Walkinshaw went in search for like-minded partners to share in his future vision, some big names came to the table. The reason that WAU was formed was actually a result of the death of the Holden Racing Team. Now, the hot story that everybody is talking about that broke last week, of course, is the Holden Racing Team. As we know, it will be no more in 2017. When Holden decided to cut their budget in half and we're the unfortunate victim of that, quite rightly to be honest, our performance hadn't been anywhere near as, as, as good as it should have been. So losing HRT was like losing your own personality or your own sense of being. We had lost that team name, that was how we sold ourselves, how we talked about ourselves, that was a lot of our pride. So when that went away, I guess it's like any major separation there's a moment of soul searching, there's real hurt and angst and despair. I guess the beauty was that when we worked out that we could become Walkinshaw and Andretti United uh, with Zach Brown and Michael Andretti alongside Ryan, there was a sense of we can rebuild and create something new. Once that deal with Holden was done, um, we had to go and reinvent ourselves because we couldn't spend the rest of our lives in motorsport being the team that was HRT, because that's just bullshit. You can't build a story around that. And so I wanted to reinvent the team. It had to come from something which was, which was genuine, that could evoke passion, that would be exciting, that would you know, build, that was something we could build a story around. Here is Victory Lane. Voted by the global motorsport media as the racers races of the last century, only one man has won the Indy 500 the Daytona 500, and the Formula One championship, Mario Andretti. The Andretti name is a big global motorsport brand. Mario's son, Michael Andretti, has successfully made the transition from championship driver to champion owner as Indy 500 winners and an Indy car championship winning team. Andretti Autosport is a leading outfit with teams in Indy car, sports car, and Formula E racing. And Michael, was keen to add a supercar operation to his portfolio. You know, I, I think we just hit it off right away. You know, we were talking the same language and, and uh, you know, I thought it was a great opportunity for us to get our brand down in Australia with the top brand down there with Walkinshaw's. Our history speaks for itself. On the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, another serious operator in the world of global motorsport was eyeing a seat in this new powerhouse coalition. I had known Ryan for, for some time, and he was looking for a, 
for a partner. I kind of thought, well, wait a minute, I might want to get in on that uh, on that action. Is there any room for us to join? And the, and there was, and hence the uh, the birth of Waukesha Andretti United. Zach Brown is one of the most dynamic, influential, and successful players in world motorsport. A former racer, Zach heads the leadership team as chief executive officer of McLaren Racing and runs his own successful sport car team, United Auto Sports. I knew that if we got things right, we'd be really, really strong and we have the ability to go and, uh, and, and dominate. With significant changes bringing on an established star in Chaz with his engineer Adam DeBore, bringing in the Super 2 champion in Bryce, a young guy that's hungry for success. Wholesale changes in the organisation, just like a reset initially, and then as the year goes on try and build some consistency into results so that you've got a foundation to build on through 2020 to take into the 21 season. We've had a lot of things thrown at us, having gone through some pretty shitty years. The reward for that has to be that we go and win a championship. So very keen and motivated and focused on trying to achieve that. Just because they're leaving the country, it doesn't mean that they're, you know, there's a torrent of fans out there that want to see their final year in supercars to be something special. And let's make sure that when people are looking back at this year, they see that it's special because of us, not because of Triple Eight or any of the other guys down pit lane. Let's try and make a statement that you know this year is remembered not only for the last year of Holden, but also for the reemergence of our team uh, and doing you know the Holden brand proud in their final ever season in Supercars. I think it's something that we can all get behind. I think it's just something that my family feel would be you know pretty important to us. Let's go, Wilson. We've worked too hard to not do it, so it's not an if; it has to be a when and uh, we'll just keep fighting until it fucking happens. Twenty twenty was scheduled for fourteen rounds across Australia with a flyaway round in New Zealand. The traditional start to the season, the uncompromising streets of Adelaide in South Australia. So the Adelaide 500 is like kicking off the season with a grand final. We get crowds from all over Australia converging on the city of Adelaide. The atmosphere is incredible. There's such a buzz around town and that's from the get-go. The minute those gates open, it's unbelievable. It's a car killer. It kills cars, it kills confidence. It kills drivers' careers in some instances. So you have to have confidence in the package that you're driving on that day to be able to lay it on the line in the race. Well, the Adelaide 500 is, is an amazing track. It's one of my favourite tracks. You come out of pre-season, you might, as a driver, had lucky enough to have a, a test day. For some teams, you might debut a brand new race car. You go to a street circuit, physical, mental strain on the body with curbs, concrete walls, crowning of the roads, manholes, white lines. Strategy plays a massive part. It was a tremendous battle on the run down to turn one. Damn, it's a hard track. Like, it's a gruelling track for drivers, mentally, physically. Most people get through it okay on a Saturday, but then when you walk in on a Sunday knowing you'll do 78 laps, 250 kilometres, your back's sore, your feet have got blisters, your hands have got blisters, and you know that it's going to be a tough day in the seat. That's the mental part that needs to be strong. For co-owner Ryan Walkinshaw, the season opener brings both a high level of anticipation and anxiety. The team cannot afford any mistakes in 2020. And will this large investment in change pay off? I'm positive, I'm excited. I'm excited because I like change. Some people hate change, but I, I embrace change. I'm not afraid of it and I, I, I relish it. So I'm really, really excited to see if those changes are the right ones. You never know until they're you know, in practice, right? Adelaide first practice session is the best thing of the year because you get a gauge straight away. The really good drivers drive out and they're immediately on it. Everyone's got pretty good tyres. Practice is limited. You get a really good feel for where you are in the first 15 minutes of that year. It just happens all the time. It's extraordinary. 
you know, we had a pretty solid test day at, at the week previously. We felt that going into Adelaide, we uh, were like, okay, well maybe we can be top five, top six consistently on the weekend. We hit the ground running. You've got always high expectations to get a good result. You always want to overachieve, but yeah, we'd always love to, to go out there and, and try and get some trophies on the first weekend. But we'll just have to, to see how it all kind of pans out. Green light, let's get it on. And we've got just under 30 minutes now as this session gets going. And this is going to be fascinating. Where does WAU sit in this highly competitive field? Will Chaz and the engineering group deliver? This is the session to begin the process of answering those questions. Today was pretty special coming in. We obviously had that one test day with the team and we had a lot of niggly little things go wrong with the car. So really didn't know where we were at on this first day. Fastest Commodore, Mostert. You haven't said that at Walkinshaw Andretti United for a while. Happy hour in Adelaide. We're inside 60 seconds from the end of this session with a lot to play for. It'll influence the way things play on Sunday. Two faster sectors now for Mostert. Mostert. Mostert is going very quickly out there at the moment. You've been tipping him all weekend. McLaughlin is the fastest over Davison. This guy on screen is going to threaten them both. The best time that we've seen so far is a 19.5. Chaz Mostert on debut for Walkinshaw, Andretti United. Yes! It's to the top on a one minute 19.2. Blindingly fast. Uh, currently P1. Awesome job, buddy. 10 seconds remaining. Just watch out the cars on that behind you. Great work, mate. That's Great uh, work indeed. Driver stuff. That is grab the car by the scruff of the neck and make it do stuff it shouldn't do. It was a bit of a breath of fresh air because everyone was so tense about whether or not this, uh, this big investment, this big move that we'd made, this big change in the team was actually going to pay off or whether it was going to be a disaster. And a lot of people were hoping that we were going to fail, right? A lot of people down pit lane were hoping that Chaz was going to come to our team with Adam and it was going to just be a complete fucking failure. Great job, Chaz Mostert. Big story in the off season was this gentleman moving from Tickford across to Walkinshaw Andretti United, took his engineer with him, and he's repaid the faith. <laughs> a one minute 19.2. Quickest car of the field to end the first day of the season and a new Adelaide track practice record. For the team at Walkinshaw Andretti United, this is the shot in the arm that everyone needed, but there is still a very long way to go. So on Thursday night when Chaz broke the lap record, you ha actually have mixed emotions because part of you as a leader of the team who've seen this, who've been to Adelaide several times and had great rounds, wants to say, chill the fuck down. You know, you look back and you go, okay, let's, let's settle it down. But I don't think you can stifle that emotion, that feeling, um, because you've got a group of people in this team who have been through a lot, who have been through years of underperformance, years of mediocrity, who are just fucking over it. And so when you change some stuff, everyone's on board to take this team to the next level. And that was that moment that the pot boiled over because you were like, holy fuck, we are on this. New drivers, new engineer, new hope. Walkinshaw and Andretti United must find form. All eyes are on the 27-year-old Queenslander, Chaz Moster. It was really obvious coming into the season that Chaz was looking for a change. He'd really matured as a driver and he was probably looking for a little bit more leadership and that opportunity was right there for him at Walkinshaw Andretti United to have a rookie next to him but also to build a team around him and for him to really be the guy, the star driver. You know, we, we're the famous team, the Holden Racing team. We had the legions of fans and, and we had underdelivered for so long and we needed to make a serious shift off track and on track to bring it back and to try and find the magic ingredient and start again. And so in that respect, um, Chaz could resonate with that. He could come to a place that felt like it was going somewhere. And I think to have Adam DeBore with him come across was a massive opportunity for them to really do something special. And, and they really got started from the very beginning. But it was really obvious to see that they'd had a chat. 
It had a talk about how they wanted things to be and that permeated right throughout the garage. Anytime you walk in there, it's really positive. They're encouraging each other, but they've also got their eyes forward. They're looking, okay, maybe that didn't work. How are we going to find a way to ensure that we can be successful? Yeah, you know, that Friday lap was pretty awesome. The car was pretty hooked up. I still think there's some things we need to, to learn about the car, but, but overall, uh, it's absolutely blowing my expectations out of the water at the moment. It was just, it was an unbelievable moment for the group, you know. The team has had a bit of hardship and they have invested heavily in Chaz, myself, the program, the path that we wanted to go in. And it, you always have that bit of doubt. Even if they, even though they back you, you still have that bit of doubt. You've got to, you know, put the money where your mouth is and prove that this is the path that you know, have to go on to have success. You see the passion that the team has. Um and been striving for some time to get some great results. Um, probably been a little bit of a drought for them to, to have that kind of pace or, or show those um, type of results. So to see that just in a practice session absolutely blew my mind and uh, really strive uh, for me for the next day going into quali in the, in the races because um, yeah, just to see that reaction is, is something um, pretty amazing. Chaz looks like he's really happy and I think that's the biggest difference for season 2020. He's right where he needs to be. He's starting to get all the things around him that he needs to be a champion. And it's only onwards and upwards from here for them. Next time on Inside Line. It's Bryce Forward in 2019. And he pencils his name down as a Dunlop Super 2 champion. The first from the Northern Territory. Taking a punt on a young bloke, if it's the right young bloke, can really pay off. It hit me when we went to the Worlds in Spain. And I'm looking at all these kids behind him, they're going to Formula One, you know, yeah. and here's this little kid from Darwin that's starting off the front row. It is our great privilege this weekend to be here in Adelaide. Huge trouble down here at night, huge trouble. And in fact, forward goes straight ahead. He bounced off the tyres. This has been a great strategy play. If he can possibly get by, he does. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Good up, Beautiful work, Chas Mostert, and some happy faces down there at Walkinshaw Andretti United. Ryan Walkinshaw, team owner. Awesome drive, mate. Awesome effort, mate. Well done. Well done, everyone. My, my performance was hopeless. Absolutely hopeless. I, I wanted to go in there and put my best foot forward, and to be honest, I think I showed my worst foot I possibly could. <laughs>